Hi guys, after a long hiatus, finally here is part 3 of how to run a Hornby live stream. Uh, I noticed that in the last video, uh, the whistle blew but it never saw it. So let me continue on from where I left off. The difference is I am now using a handheld iPhone 4. So, it should be nice high definition and everything. So, um, as you can see, that's the safety valve blowing off, so this girl's ready to go. And I've already warmed it up, so this is what I didn't show you last time. Here's the controller. When I mentioned jogging, this is the jogging that I mentioned. Jog once, jog twice. I'll just get it going. So three times, four times. And while I'm doing that, you can see here in the, in the, in, in the cab of the uh, engine that red light's flashing. When it's red, it means uh, it's stopped. Well, when, it, when it's green, it means the valve gear is set to go in a direction, either forwards or backwards. And as you can see, it just went green. So I'll continue jogging and jogging until it moves. And jogging and jogging. There it goes. Don't be afraid to give it a bit of a push, especially if it's been sitting for a while, there might be water in the cylinders. Hear that? Off she goes. I didn't do any jogging, I just sat and waited. And as you can probably hear, there's still a little bit of water in the cylinders, but they're running nicely now. Oh, slowing down because I've got a fair bit of weight on it. See this? Five carriages. Uh, these are the these Hornby carriages don't roll as well as a lot of American rolling stock, so there's a fair bit of drag on this, which is a good thing because it prevents it from running away. Which is why I haven't run it for some time now. If you notice, if you haven't already noticed, I now have clear plastic around the layout. I installed clear plastic on the layout because this little guy wanted to leave this earth. Well, this representation of it anyway. So um, uh, I vowed not to run this again until I've got safety, safety walls in place to prevent it falling. And as you can see, if you look carefully, one of the front bumpers is missing because it's uh, its last foray into the great yonder eliminated that bumper, so... Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. And if you may notice, there's another one. No, you're not seeing double. This is a DC version. Again, made by Hornby. Electric. And this is an even older Hornby of an over 84. Uh, this is dating. Uh, this is a golden fleece dating back to the mid 1950s for the model. That is, so it's quite an old model. Anyway, back to this guy. He's chuffing along quite happily. I keep banging into that barrier too. So sorry about that. So let's stop it. We'll take several revolutions of this layout. Stop it. So to do so, you jog. Now listen carefully and you'll be up there. Just slow down a little bit. And as you can see, it's slowing down. Well, you probably can. See the green lights flashing? That means that the command is reaching it. So let me try and stop it in situ uh, in front of the railway station. No, okay, there we go. As you can see, it's turned red, the cabin light, cab light, so I've continued the whistle, goes into reverse if I keep going, and then forwards again, get the whistle, and off we go, oh boy, i be careful about when that happens, because it can run away from you. 
Luckily, this old girl's running well and she's running smoothly. She did some repairs on her, which I'll deal with in the future because it's very technical. And uh, uh, I can go through the care and maintenance of this little guy, girl, whatever, in future episodes. But anyway, this is the, that's what was missing last time, the jogging. I spoke of it and uh, in part two, but you guys never actually saw it. As you can see, it's finally up and running again. I've since moved house, done a whole bunch of stuff. Things have changed a lot. So that's why the delay, folks. Sorry about that. So anyway, as I was saying, one jogs, like so. There's a couple other things I've learned since um, I, I last, my last episode, since our last communication, um, namely the control circuit, the, 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 the way, the, way the, the, the valve system is controlled by the uh, uh, steam, for the steam engine is uh, electrically, as you know, but the way it does it is it drops it below 9 volts DC from what I can Google. Somebody put a, a scope on it or something. So, it's, so um, I kind of figured that if the controller is on superheat, which is position number four, there, that means that the voltage there is going to be the highest possible, which means that it's going to be very unlikely, or more unlikely for it to run away. Watch what happens when I jog it. See how the voltage drops down to zero and back up to around ten. And back down to zero again. Let me try and focus on this again. There we go. Watch it drop down to zero. Flicker and then back up. Now that little flicker, there it is again. Actually it doesn't even reach five, does it? That little flicker, that, um, we better slow it down. That little flicker is the command that goes down to the loco every time you jog it. So I figured if I had it on a lower voltage, and like when I turn this down here to simmer, you see how that's slightly lower? There's more chance of um, connectivity issues bad connections and so forth, making the damn thing go out of control, which is why safety fence. And there she goes. So let me slow it down and bring it to a stop, see if I can do that in front of the station again. I'm jogging, jogging in the reverse direction, and as you can see, eventually it stops. Jog once more, jog again, and stop. Let's make the whistle go. And then jog it forwards until the red light turns green. There we go. Alright, well, that's it for this one. Um, I hope you guys like it, especially Dylan. I got to email that guy and tell him I finally updated. Oh, and by the way, yes, um, uh, this is an American designed layout, which is a different scale, which is uh, HO instead of double O. So this locomotive uh, looks rather large in scale with the rest of it because it is uh, a different scale. Suffice to say, the track still works. The track's like an English, English track, but never mind. So, um, uh, I guess part four will probably be more technical. Leave me, um, leave me a note if you need more details. And, uh, you know, if you want to see how to uh, care and maintain it, because um, they're very high maintenance. I did I had to do some serious work on this little guy, especially after it flies off the track. 
Um, but I'm in the market for a uh, Flying Scotsman. Uh, I keep uh, looking at eBay, so if you hear of any Flying Scotsman live steamer that hasn't been run, um, they don't make these anymore. In answer to somebody's question, um, um, that what, uh, how much was it? Well, it was about, I can't remember now, four or five hundred dollars, I think. But um, uh, on, on eBay, God knows, depends on how much they want to sell it for and what the market bears, because they don't make them anymore. Anyway, oh boy, it's still on superheat. Better turn it off. Hmm, haven't done that before. Anyway, talk to you later. Um, hopefully this guy isn't going to blow up in the face. And uh, as I say, leave me a link. And, and encouragement is welcome, because if nobody watches this, there's no point, is there?